We looked at something we call governance, so it's the combination of the laws and the management institutions and the stakeholders involved. So basically it's the human dimension of the Baltic Sea that we're looking at. So one of the main outcomes that we have uh, delivered to BEAM, I think it's a, it's a, it's a road map for study. When we, when we should be studying governance, where, what should we study? So we have developed sort of a systems understanding of, of how actors interact with institutions, how they develop laws, how they're influenced by the political context. So it's basically a, a systems perspective of, of the loss management clusters. And within that, we have primarily looked at how do institutions evolve in relation to ecological change and how the different actors, so fishermen and, and farmers, how do they adapt to changing ecosystems and changing institutions. So it's a bit of a co-evolution between uh, organizations and individuals and ecosystems that we are trying to understand. Well, we've been doing lots of different things within BEAM, but I would say as a kind of general uh, summary of the kinds of things we've been doing is that we've been trying to see uh, the relevance of ecosystem processes uh, when it comes to um, environmental contaminants. Uh, traditionally, it's, they've been studied in the lab in small containers in a very controlled conditions, not taking into account environmental, con real environmental conditions. So that's been our focus, uh, looking at... Uh, how those kinds of things affect how environmental contaminants spread in the environment and what kind of effects they might have. In our group we are looking at uh, the use of remote sensing and uh, bio-optical measurements for monitoring the Baltic Sea. And the main outcome of our beam work is um, uh, a study when we have looked at the relations between sedum, which is colour dissolved organic matter, and DOC which is dissolved organic matter and how these relations are different in the different basins in the Baltic Sea. And this is important for management um, uh, issues of um, the ru loads runoff entering the Baltic Sea and if this will change with climate changes. So it's not uh, definitely not just me, it's my group and it's also our wonderful collaborators in Finland, Spain, Norway, Germany, which are very excited about this kind of research in general about the uh, harmful algal blooms and their effects on ecosystems. It's an enormous amount of cases when it's considered as a nuisance bloom, not efficiently utilized by consumers and uh, basically as just as a sign of eutrophication, which is not quite true. This is a primary production that is efficiently used in the both benthic and pelagic food webs and ultimately transferred to fish production. We just don't know how much of it is transferred and how it's affected by other ecosystem parameters, like the food web structure, climate change, and uh, many, many other parameters in the ecosystem. And this is what we are very excited about. This is what we are uh, trying to figure out using molecular methods, using the long-term data analysis, using the food web analysis the best we can. So we have been looking at the degradation of terrestrial organic matter uh, with the help of a 3D model that simulates currents uh, and with that we could see that a lot of what's coming to the Baltic Sea uh, with rivers is removed within, <laughs> within the Baltic Sea by, by some kind of internal sink so we don't really know what it is it can be by photodegradation so it's degraded by sunlight it can be degraded by microbes or bacteria or it can also flocculate and sediment to the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Uh, I've studied the spring phytoplankton dynamics and looked especially on the timing of the bloom and the composition of the bloom and I've seen that that uh, some climate related variables influence both the timing and uh, the composition. Uh, timing uh, we have, have got uh, earlier blooms in the last 20 years with uh, one to two weeks earlier uh, and the main um, uh, predictor for the earlier bloom seems to be more light and, or less clouds it could be and less winds or lower wind speeds uh, and 
there is also uh, an effect of temperature. Uh, higher temperature seems to, to make diatoms and, and dinoflagellates to bloom earlier. But actually the, the trend the last 20 years has been that we have got uh, colder temperatures uh, during spring. So that cannot explain the earlier blooms we have got. Um, but this effect on, on, uh, by temperature on, on the bloom uh, uh, timing of diatoms and uh, dinoflagellates, we don't see any effect of the overall bloom, like total biomass of the spring bloom uh, by temperature. And the reason for that is probably that low temperature and winters with a lot of ice favors diatoms that bloom earlier than dinoflagellates. So when we get warmer climates, we get earlier blooms, but also shift to later blooming uh, groups. Nowadays, management uh, is uh, basically directed towards uh, nutrient reductions in part, or at least with some goal to minimize these algal blooms. But if uh, these uh, blooms produce organic matter that is ultimately transferred to secondary production and fish production, then by nutrient reductions we will also diminish this uh, good production, the production we are as humans uh, living around the Baltic Sea are interested in. So what we can do is to find out what are those optimal levels of uh, nutrient loading and what are those optimal levels of uh, cyanobacteria blooms in the Baltic that we can happily live together with. I think uh, managers are quite always quite reluctant to, or it's difficult for managers to take into account these kind of complex interactions, but I think it's definitely something they should be aware of for, uh, for management purposes, that chemicals are not on their own out there, they're in a, in, in a context where there's eutrophication and fishing and all kinds of other things going on, so that it's, um, even if they can't immediately deal with chemicals in an integrated way, it should at least be on the, on the roadmap for the future. In order to get to this big picture, we've had a lot of people with different disciplines and backgrounds that have been contributing with their part. But I think one illustrative example is a study led by, by one of my PhD students, Jonas, where he has looked at, so fishermen, what, what are they doing and what is it that's driving their behaviours? Is it, is it what's happening in the ecosystems? Is it the markets that they are operating in? Or is it the institutions that, or the management organisations and the policies that are shaping them? So trying to understand what is actually shaping change. And in this case he looked at several fisheries in Sweden over time and found that the main driver of change is actually uh, management. So management matters. We didn't know if that, had a, uh, if that was more important than markets or ecosystems, but this study makes it clear that management really makes a difference, which is of course really positive because then uh, you know, legislation and, and new policy tools actually makes a difference. We didn't know that before and this study indicates that it actually does.